Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to episode 13 of our Let's Play on Life is Feudal. So, what's on today's agenda? Well, today I want to show you guys how to make steel. Now, we also might do a wee bit more tanning, a wee bit more drying as well. As you can clearly see, my guild members Cafolar and Silver have been busy leveling up. We also managed to get last night a bloomery. Now I apologise for having no episode made last night. I was a wee bit late coming home and I was a wee bit tired as well. So I didn't. I was wasn't able to get an, uh, a video out yesterday, and there was a few other factors contributing to it as well. But anyway, we had to delete two of our furnaces for this. Now the reason why that is there, and I've probably miscounted this. I have miscounted it. What we're going to do is eventually we're going to have three bloomeries sitting here. And I'll show you what a bloomery is, right? A bloomery is... What in the hell is that doing in there? Oh, it's broken. Okay. Right. A bloomery is basically a fat furnace. A fat, fat furnace. A bloomery is the equivalent of four furnaces. So you can stock this full of iron, full of copper, silver, or gold, and you will make hundreds of bits of metal from this and it's an ideal crafting station especially when you've got your masonry high enough to have this it allows your blacksmiths to stop using these primitive looking uh, furnaces and start using the more blacksmith-esque uh, facilities for example the bloomery now we don't have the skill to make a blacksmith shop just now the only thing that's wait that we're currently waiting on is one of my guild members to reach at least 75 in masonry. I can't remember if it's 90 or 75. I wasn't a builder on the MMO. I'm still trying to remember all the values that you need to build specific key buildings, aka crafting bonus buildings. But anyway, we're actually going to be using the bloomery today because I'm going to show you how to make steel. Steel is basically the second best metal in the game. Now, let me explain something. Iron has a top value for anything that you craft at 60 quality, specifically weapons, okay? Iron will only allow you to craft uh, weapons at between 0 quality and 60 quality. That is the range of iron, basic iron, right? Now, if you make steel more refined iron with more ingredients tossed in there, you open up the range for crafting from 0 to 60 to 0 to 80. Now, there is a final metal and it is very difficult. It's not difficult to make, but it's very time consuming and very resource heavy. It's called Vastaskis uh, iron or Vastaskis steel, uh, steel, sorry. And gaining that is about, you know, a couple days work just to gain one ingot. But, for the purpose of today's video, I'm going to show you how to make steel. So, first thing you're going to need is flux. Now, my guild members have been nice enough to actually make me a few more cr a few more storage facilities. We've now got three cupboards, one holds plate, one holds scale, and one holds chainmail. You can probably see on the right hand side of the screen that they are accurately named. I've also got my bones and raw food, extra raw food. I've got my tool chest up there, might get more of those. My gemstones and valuables, flax and fibers, hides. Over here we have the bones crate, the crap crate, <laughs> the feather crate, the preps crate, the food crate, and the herbs crate. And these two, this is the shields and this is the one hand weapon. So anything from axes, maces and swords are in here at the moment. So. We need to go into the preps crate, and we need 36, now I plan to make 3 steel ingots, 36 flux, okay? I can't show you how to make this because I hate herbalism, but I will try my best to make a video around making this, and, the, and uh, showing you an easier way to obtain it instead of going through various herbs to try and find this, okay? Next thing we're going to need is we're going to need some iron ingots. Now, we're making three steel ingots, okay? So we need a total of six iron ingots. So here's our six. We've got two quality 37s and four quality 50s. Let me just check if there's any decent quality ones left in here. That's a 37, 
that's a bar, we don't want bars. The reason why we're making steel ingots is because we can melt them down into bars and especially lumps which will create us heavy bolts and steel weapons aka quality 80 rated weapons which is really handy especially if you've got the skill to use it at uh, level 80, level 90 you will do a wee bit more damage with a steel weapon. Anyway, I'll basically just break this down for you. You need two ingots and you need 12 flux to make one steel ingot. Okay, so you need 12, 12 of this and two of this and it produces one. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, you don't have to split it like this, but I'm going to split it for the purposes of just showing you. So we've got six, 36 and this produces, and if there was a little tree here, three steel ingots. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop them into our bloomery. So let's run over here. The bloomery has the capacity of four furnaces, so we could even make some, you know, we could actually boil up some iron while we're at it, which I might do. So what we can do is we can just fire this on. Now, my object sounds is off for this, because like the kiln in episode two or three, I believe, I showed you, it's very loud. Now the other different thing about this, the other key difference about this is, the furnace will only go to 1500 in temperature. This can go to 2000. Look at that. Which means you can make metal a lot faster. Now let's just double check how much we've actually got in there in terms of capacity. We could put another 200 iron in there. So let's go grab a shovel. Let's go grab a shovel and we'll put some iron in there. Now this is a great way for, for example, if you've got a player, a new player in your guild and you've got a bloomery and they want to level up their smelting, this is the best way to get, th to get them really, really high up. Especially if it's like early game or late game, sorry. So, just run over and get, in fact, while we're at it actually as well, let's pick up what's in here. What did we get? We got a thin leather. Another thin leather. Another thin leather. We need to do a wee bit more drying as well. Uh, it's actually quite good that we got some thin leather because I used up all the thin leather making um, the tier 1 and tier 2 armour from the previous episode. From uh, episode 12, I think it was. I think it was 12. Or it was the previous. Yep, it was definitely the previous one. So let's just jam these in here. Notice how I don't stack them. I like to keep them from being stacked. If they're the same quality, I'll stack them, but if they're not, I'll just leave them as they are. We also need a crucible and tongs. That's quite important as well. There it is. Oh, that's, bro is that broken? That's broken, that needs to go in the furnace, that needs to go in the bloomery. The good thing about the bloomery as well, as soon as you reach, I think it's level 90 smelting, or level 60, level 90, you can recycle. So basically what you can do here is, you can put in metal tools into the bloomery. It will heat them and you will be given back uh, the, the the equivalent in terms of m uh, metal and lumps. So you'll be given lumps back instead of bars or anything like that. So what we need to do is that one's almost busted as well. So we might actually have to make a new one. That's a quality 7 hap. Where's all the good stuff? There it is. I was concerned about, like, you know... <laughs> Why I didn't have any high like, de like, de decent quality. Right, we've got at least one iron ingot, so we can make a crucible and tongs right now. And that's what we're going to do. So while that is busy doing its job melting things, we will currently make a crucible and tongs. And it only requires one ingot. So let's make that. Awesome. And it came out at what quality? 35. That's fair. That's fine. That's not so bad. You also notice I've got a big gash across my face. I I actually went onto the game last night just to play uh, off screen and I went around uh, challenging a few people to duels and it was really fun. They had a good they had a good laugh from it. Now you can see already look how far everything is in terms of like temperature. You can see it's with a furnace, it would have probably taken a wee bit longer than that. And what I'm also going to do is I'm not going to use that iron sitting there. 
I'm actually going to go get my quality iron out. Which is these. Oh, that as well. My guild, one of my guild members, Kaflar, has reached the point where he can place herbal gardens. Now, herbal gardens require a specific region of boards. We need Sleeper's Forge. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on my uh, live map now. And I'm going to toggle the... Uh, the regions of my map and you can see everybody's guild you can see my guild you can see everybody else's guild but you can see the regions and they're all like br br they're broken down i think the top left there's only two and then there's one that has four or five regions to it oh excuse me but yeah these are the regions of my server and what i'll need to do is if i need a specific um if i need a specific region I need to go to that region and harvest what I need from, from it, essentially. Now, I'm going to get 240 iron from this. Quality 56, that should be enough. 256, 240, sorry, at quality 56. But anyway, the regions, if you want regional boards from, for example, Sleeper's Tongs, you need to go to Sleeper's Tongs, cut down a tree, and you need to, you know, saw it out in that region. Because it belongs in that area. Sleeper's Forge. Again, if you need anything from there, you need to do it there. So, what you essentially need to do is, every now and again, if you need a... Like, say, for example, my kitchen over here. What does it need? So, it needs a Sleeper's Forge copper ingot. It needs two of those. So, I need to go into the Sleeper's Forge region and mine out copper ore. And I need to get the equivalent of 40 ore in order to get that. So, that's what regions are in this game. They're not to do with, like, where you rule or where you're sitting or what, you're, what particular region you're playing in. It's to do with the materials. Because specific buildings in this game require uh, materials from specific regions. It's the same on the MMO, it's the exact same. People actually need to go to Southern Drifters, which is down the bottom left hand corner of the map, and that's like a 3x3 three three kilometer scaled map. It's huge! It takes you a long time to get from point A to point B. That's why the MMO is so big. That's why everybody has outposts on the MMO. And that leads me to my next thing. On Life is Fiddle Your Own, you can build the outpost. You can build it. It is buildable. However, it is bigger than a tier 4 claim, which means you can't build it close to anybody. It has to be put in a place where absolutely no one is. For example, on my map right now, there is nobody up here. There's nobody in this location. There's a guy right here, but there's nobody here, right? I tested this out yesterday. And you can place one right here, but it has to be right on the beach. It has to be right on the beach, like right here. It's really, really, really finicky. And it has to be absolutely miles away from people. I could put one down here as well. I could technically put one down here. Because there is a, there's a guild here. There's a guild here. I believe there's a guild right here as well. So I might get away with putting one right here or even on top of this. So... Hopefully, I'll get one made in this series, and I'll be able to show you guys what it is. And I'll also be able to use Dante's uh, slave, which we still have, by the way. We still have that slave. Uh, where is he? Where is he? There he's there. Dante Dracarius. A quality 67 slave. He is, uh, he is well skilled, and he is well within his qualities. He's above 50. He'll be useful. So... If we do manage to get an outpost, I'll show you that, and I'll show you what the slaves do, and what happens when you have an outpost. Now, the outpost can actually be taken from you. It can be attacked. It's almost like a second base. It's almost like, um, it's almost like having a monument. So, for example, uh, my green terrain here, my green uh, claim area, it's a wee bit like this, but... Uh, you don't have these buildings in it. You don't have these crafting buildings in it. You can put them in. You can actually put them in and they'll be protected. 
You can also put in walls so you can further protect your uh, your outpost. And oh dear. Now the command that I just put in there was slash stuck. This is a command that has been in Life is Feudal Your Own for ages, from day one. They put in slash stuck to allow you to get out of positions where you might get stuck. Now, all you do is place it in your chat bar. You just press enter, type in slash slash duck and then you press enter and it will give you this little timer. Now it does take a little while to free you like that and it will put you on the first solid, solid surface it can find. If you're inside a claim, an enemy claim or somebody else's claim, what it will do is it will actually send you outside the border of that claim. It won't do it if you're on your own claim, it will do it, only do it, if you're in somebody else's claim. Now, these iron ingots are just about ready, so we'll be able to get our steel soon. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all three of them and I'm going to place them back into the bloomery. Because what I want to do is I want to turn them into bars and I want to make swords and axes and lances at higher quality, which will generate better damage. So, what was I talking about there? What was I talking about? I've totally lost my train of thought. I need to actually go check my barns and my, my stable here. Make sure that my animals are actually still alive. Okay, so they're still alive. Uh, I can't harvest. I can't slaughter either. That's fine. That's alright. We've got a sheep. Yep, we've still got a breeding pair. And we have our horses in here. We've still got our cows. Now, one of my... Um, one of my horses, I turned into a courier horse using my training field. Now, I wanted to show you guys that, but unfortunately I wasn't recording and I was playing yesterday and I kind of needed the skill. So, what I'll be doing is I'll be leveling up this, Warhorse Training. At level 30, there's a chance to train hardy warhorses. Between 0 and 29, you've got the chance to make warhorses or courier horses. Now, let me show you what a courier horse looks like. Right? For you guys who already know, you get, you guys already know what a courier horse is. Okay, so, a courier horse looks just like a standard horse, right? So, double click, release, and we'll mount him. And pop. There we go. Looks just like a normal horse, but they are very quick. They are fast horses. They're essentially uh, resource driving horses. They're not designed for fighting, they're designed to carry, for example, if you're overburdened, this thing will still go like the, still go like a bullet, alright? It's also pretty useful when you tether it to, to uh, for example, a horse cart. All you have to do is put the horse beside it, backwards, right? Jump off the horse, right click, and harness. Now you need to make sure that this horse is actually close to the horse cart. If it's like way over here, it won't bind. It needs to be quite close. Right? Boom. There we go. We've now got a horse cart. With a horse on it. And what we can do is we can get on it. There we go. Nice, nice little animation getting on there. And then you can drive it. You're essentially... It's, you're essentially an old warehouse. A warehouse used to have like three... 3,000 uh, storage storage points in it. This has got 3,000 storage points in it, I believe. If I just look into the inventory. Yep, 3,000. And I've also got a blueprint in there. A balanced staff. Oh boy, I need to make one of them. Right, so what we'll do is we'll just unharness the horse because I don't want my, uh, anybody coming in and killing the horse. Because the horse is quite valuable at this, at this point. There we go. And we can just hide him now. Okay, so let's go make our steel. And then we'll place it back into the bloomery. And we'll make steel bars. We'll also recycle our uh, broken tools. That's something we need to do. So let's run over. Also need to do some more drying as well. Lots of materials to make when you're at this level. Or this late in the game. Right, one more little boost and pop. There we go. Steel ingot. Mass produce that, please. One, two, three. And you'll see inside 
that they are completely done. We can also click the recycle button. Let's recycle a saw. And I was given back 18 lumps, 18 lumps of iron. And now we can recycle the glaive. Let's recycle that. We were given back 16 as well. Now they are very low quality. Life is Feudal used to operate with, if you recycled the metal, if you kept putting it back into the bloomery, if you kept repeating the cycle, take it out, put it back in, take it out, put it back in, you're refining it and refining it and refining it, taking out all those impurities and essentially making quality 100 ingots. You can no longer do that anymore. You can't do that for recycling either. Right. We've now got our steel ingots, and they came out at reasonable qualities, so we're just going to chuck them back in. And you go. Let's give it another little blow, and we can't do anything right, right now. We need to wait for the rest of that metal as well, the rest of that iron. So we've also got a second stable going down, so what we're going to do, I had a word with Kafalar and Silver, what we're going to do is we're going to take the cows out of that, and we're going to place them into this. We're going to place them into this one. Because um, the cows are taking up some space that I want to use for breeding horses. That's that's just me though. We've got our little herbal gardens, as I said it before, and I've also taken away the little um, the little fences here because they were they were actually getting quite annoying. We do have plans to turn this into a stone base, and I hope we can get that done uh, during this series because I'd like to show you guys that fortification. Because I think it would be really cool to see that. I mean, there is some players out there right now uh, on the map at the moment that have stone walls and they are well protected. But me? No, I've still got wooden walls. With the current terraforming as well, I think it will be quite well defended. The back will need to be uh, dropped a good wee bit as well. Back here. I'll need to drop that terraforming even more on the left hand side outside the walls. I'll need to drop that lower. Oh, I need to check my coops. See, there's all about management. You need to keep on top of things. For example, feeding your animals, making sure they're clean, making sure they don't die. If they die, then you lose all of that potential, uh, all those potential resources or potential skill if you're still leveling up. Right, let's give this one little blast and we can now make some ingots. Now we've got 240 units of, of iron in here. So these should be coming out at quality 61. We've got quality 60 iron ingots. Awesome. That's perfect. So we get 12 from that. So let's place back in, uh, let's put 8 back in. Let's keep 4 and place 8 back in. There we go. Is that crucible done? That crucible and tongs is also done. So we can recycle that. Now, you can recycle your tools, or you can sacrifice them. It's better if you sacrifice them, but if you need the metal, if you definitely need the metal and you need lumps, it's probably wise that you should do it through the recycling method. I mean, you can just, you know, melt down iron ingots into lumps, but this is a good way of getting them back as well. So what I can do actually here is because, because I'm not really caring about the quality, quality 10, what I'll do with these is I'll turn these into bolts and arrows. They won't be good quality, but they'll still be lethal nonetheless. So, that's always something to keep in mind. We've also still to start this kitchen. That's a lot of metal. That's quite a lot of metal. It's five iron bars. Five iron bars for each metal band. So, we need a hundred. We need a hundred, um metal bars, or iron bars, to make 20 metal bands. These materials should be fairly simple, fairly straightforward. We've got trees growing around us, Kafalars planted, quality 86 oaks, which is perfect, because they are loaded with, uh, they're loaded with wood. This is going to be a challenge, because I need to go into Sleeper's Forge region, and I need to find a location where copper is. And then I need to extract that copper from that location and get home safely. So there is a wee bit of risk involved in it as well. 
Our steel ingots are almost there. Our iron ingots have just started. Let's get some more fuel as well. Always keep your bloomery fueled. Always keep it going, if you can. It will trash the durability, but it's better to keep it going and then, you know, forgetting that you, di that you didn't look after it long enough. Right, so we've got 14 of these. Now, have I got any charcoal? Oh, don't tell me I've ran out. Have I ran out? Oh, God. No, I haven't. There we go. I'm going to take 25 of this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bring this back over here. I'll place it back into the bloomery. Pop. There we go. Everything went up a wee bit as well. Handy, handy. Right, let's eat some food. Caffolar is actually in the process of levelling up cooking, so I'll be able to show you guys uh, him making particular types of food. Now, he's doing it through the cauldron at the moment, the big cauldron. He's using this at the moment just to skill it up. But as soon as we get enough materials and as soon as we get the regional, he can get a bonus from the kitchen. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention with uh, the sewing kit, that's the hides chest. The sewing kit allows me to make... Where the hell is it? Where is it? It's there. Right behind everything. The sewing kit allows you to make, you know, rags and stuff like that. But high enough in uh, tailoring. And you will make, for example, um, what do you call them? What do you, oh, what do you call them? Oh, what do you call them? They're outfits. They're basically bonus outfits for your uh, for your player. If you're a blacksmith, you can get a blacksmith outfit, and if you match that with the blacksmith uh, workshop, you get a lot of uh, quality boosts and a lot of durability bo boosts as well. Now the cool thing about steep rags, rags, and northern rags is they only require simple cloth, and we think, can we make some? Can we make some? I think we can. I think we can. I think we'll get six from this. One, two, three, four. Yep, we're definitely hitting six. Awesome. Right. Right click. Weave rope. You don't have to click. Well, I think it is. You can only do. Yes, yeah, so. You don't have to click weave rope. You can click so. So what we'll do is we'll make some rags. There we go. Up five more points. And these are actually, <laughs> it's actually worse quality than the ones that you start off with in the game. But what else can we make? We can make small pouches. Now I'm going to sacrifice some of my thin leather here. I'm going to make four, right? I'm going to level up my tailoring using these pouches. So I'll make one. There's level 30. Level 33. Level 36. Level 39. Now if we close that window and open it again, now we can make bags and simple clothing. See that? At level 30 you can make bags. Now these are actually storage containers. See if you look in the bag. Oh, it actually went off to the side there. Look in the bag. So you've got a maximum of 10. Pouches are usually used by herbalists, if I'm not mistaken. And people who don't want to show that they've got food in their inventory. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw these pouches into the warehouse. And I'm going to throw this back in here because I need to double check my metal. And let's put the rags back into the warehouse as well. So as you can see, we're all, we've all got rags and these are northern rags. You can see the differences in them. We could get steep rags as well, but rags are not amazing uh, parts of armor. They are considered armor, but they're not amazing and they get they, they trash really quickly. So our iron is almost done. So that's a good thing. Our iron's almost done. Our steel's almost done. As soon as that's done, we can make our bars. Now let's get some drying done as well. Down into the hide chest. Do we have any small hides? We do. We've got three. Three small hides. Let's just double check we're not hiding any in here. Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like we're hiding any. We can tan this as well. Go tan that. See, what you want to do is you want to refine everything. I just stacked that by accident. 
<laughs> I even know what quality that was. What quality? Oh, I just stacked that one as well. 67 and 60. Ugh. I shouldn't have done that. Right, let's go get some water. And it started raining as well. Great. Let's get some water. Okay. Got some water. Dry the rat dry these hides first. A quality 69. That's good. Always helpful. Higher quality, better materials, better armors. Okay, dry that one as well. And we'll tan this one. Use tanning tub. Thick dried hide. So we're gonna get a thick leather. So we've got three thin leathers and one thick leather. And they're just going through their process right now. Okay. Steel, are you ready? Almost, almost ready. Ooh, almost ready. <sighs> very close, very close, very close indeed. Let's drop off this. In fact, I could just drop it in here actually. Drop you, drop you, and we'll take the iron lumps, put them back in inventory. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Pop, there we go. So, this Sunday, uh, speaking of actually, this Sunday, I'm going to release some of the details for the event that's going to be happen happening a week this Sunday. So not this Sunday, the following Sunday. And it's going to be the the open field fight with one life. And there we go, we got our smelting, we get our steel bars, yes! Anyway, going back to what I was saying there about the event. Essentially the event is going to be a open scale fight with a... Uh, a kind of almost 55, only 55, 45 split. Uh, the attackers are going to gain more players than the, the defenders, so it should be interesting. The defenders, I'm hopeful, hopefully going to be placing some of the really well, well known fighters in there because they'll be essentially overwhelmed by at least four or five men, which will be pretty cool to see. Be good to record as well. I don't know what side I'm going to be on, but look out in my Discord, look out on um, my live streams as well. I'm considering doing live streams on Sunday in this game. Who knows? Might I might keep that up. I did do one uh, during the JH. Um, yeah, Saturday. I did one on Saturday, actually. A lot of people tuned in. A lot of people got to see me lancing. <laughs> as good a lancer as I am, I'm not actually that good. There's... There's phenomenal lancers out there, and they know who they are. But it was nice to see everybody watching as well. I had to ban a few people as well. Stream snipers. You know who you are. But, it was fun. It was good fun. So, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. This has been a wee bit less informative. I kind of winged this today, if you've not noticed. The, the, the kind of content is kind of lacking today. That's because I'm a wee bit tired as well. And I wanted to get an episode out. I want to try and make these daily, except for Wednesdays and Sundays. And today's really the exception because I took a day off yesterday and I wanted to make one yesterday. I didn't have time. But I hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. Let me just get the rest of this iron made up because I want the bars. I want quality 60 bars. Quality 60 bars will allow me to make some really nice uh, weapons. For example, my falchions, my battle axes, lances, spears and stuff like that. So, I'm trying to force this to get down to the... There we go. All done. No, not that. That. Boom. Quality. 61 bars. Awesome. Alright guys. I'm gonna... I'm gonna call it a night there. So, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Even though it was a wee bit lacking, I understand. I understand you guys want more, I'm trying to provide more, I'm trying to get more out for you guys. If you leave comments in the comment section about what you want to see, I can always show you that. That's always handy to do. Uh, but anyway, if you enjoyed this episode, leave a big like, it tells me you're still enjoying the series, it tells me you're still enjoying these episodes and I'll continue to make them. If you enjoyed it that much, consider subscribing and ring the little bell if you really want to, you can stay up to date with this series. So guys. From myself, my quality 60 iron bars and ingot, and my brand new steel bars, I'm Mr. Feudal. I'll see y'all later.